Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 tutorial. In this video we are finally moving on from exponentials a little bit, but not too far. We're going to look at the inverse of an exponential, or the opposite of an exponential. What can get rid of an exponential if it were in an equation? So every operation has an inverse. Addition is the inverse of subtraction. Multiplication is the inverse of division. They undo each other. Now we need the inverse of an exponential. And it's going to be a little weird because we are essentially making up a new operation. And you haven't learned a new operation probably since elementary school. So this is going to feel like you're going back to elementary school almost to learn a new operation. So let's see what we got here. Let me get rid of that mark. There we go. So we're going to start with an exponential that we know. We're going to start with 6 squared is equal to 36. Because essentially that's what you did with multiplication. When you learned multiplication, you then moved on to division. And so there was this time when you didn't know what division was, but you did know what multiplication was. And so you start with a math problem like 10 times 3 is, of course, equal to 30. So we've got two statements here that we know. And so let's start with over here. And then you had to make up this new thing. And you call it division. But let's say we don't know what division is. And so we're going to make up the opposite of multiplication. And I'm going to call it bar, because it's a bar. And so the opposite of multiplication is now called this bar, say. And well, how am I going to? What am I going to do with this bar? Well, I want to get rid of the 10, so I'm going to bar 10. And I'm going to say that this bar gets rid of the 10. But of course, if I bar one side, I have to bar the other. And if I have to bar 10 one side, i got to bar 10 the other. So now I have this interesting statement that says 3 is equal to 30 bar 10. And I have just invented the first division statement. Now, I know that sounds weird, but that's exactly what we're going to do over here with our exponentials. Because we don't know what the inverse of an exponential is. We're going to sort of make it up. And for some reason, the thing we chose is called log. And so log is going to be the opposite of this exponential, just like bar was the opposite of multiplication. And of course, if I log one side, let me actually put that in a different color. If we log one side, we have to log the other side. Now, just over here, we, we barred both sides. But what kind of bar did we do? We bar tend each side. So what kind of log are we going to do? Well, this is going to be the type of log that gets rid of a base of 6. So it's going to be called log base 6. And that will get rid of a base 6. So this over here also has to have a 6 at the bottom. Sorry, I'm kind of cramming it in there. And I'm defining this to get rid of the base 6. That brings the 2 down equals log base 6 on this side of 36. So there is our first log statement that is the opposite of an exponential. All right, I'm just now defining that log base 6 of 36 has to equal 2. And we're going to keep doing this pattern over and over again until we get familiar with log, just like you did this pattern over here over and over again, until you got familiar and comfortable with division. So let's get familiar with this. And so the way we do that is by seeing that every exponential statement that we know, and exponentials make st sense to us, also gives us a log statement. So here are a bunch of exponentials that we're familiar with. 8 squared is, of course, 64. So we're going to turn that into a log statement. So I'm going to log both sides. Log, log. Now what kind of log am I going to do? A base 8, so it gets rid of this 8. All right. So I'm going to log base 8 both sides. That's going to cross out. So 2 is equal to log 
base 8 of 64. So now we know another log statement. If I ever see log base 8 of 64 again, I know that it must equal 2. All right, let me space this one out so I have more room so I don't have to cram things in. 5 to the third is equal to 125. So I'm going to turn this into a log statement. So I'm going to log both sides. What kind of log? Well, I want to get rid of this 5, so it's log base 5 on both sides. So my definition of log means that these cancel out. A log base 5 and another base 5 cancel out. You're left with 3. And 3 is apparently log base 5 of 125. All right, last one here. 12 to the 4th is 20,000. Oops, I was supposed to leave some space there. 20,736. So I'm going to log both sides. To get rid of this 12, it's going to be a log base 12, which means if I do it to one side, I've got to do it to the other. The log base 12 and the 12 go away. You're left with 4 is equal to log base 12 of 20,736. So hopefully that pattern is getting a little bit familiar. Every exponential we can turn into a log statement. Just like every multiplication problem, 6 times 4 is equal to 24, that multiplication problem tells you a division problem. Because that is true, this must also be true. And that's just what we're doing. We're doing the opposite relationship of each exponential expression. All right, so that's going one direction. Time to go the other direction. If every exponential is a log statement, then every log statement must also be an exponential. So now we're going to go the other direction. So we're going to turn each of these log statements into an exponential. So here I have a log statement. And so first I'm going to do the equation steps. To get rid of a log base 4, we do the exponential with a base of 4. A log 4 and a base of 4, the definition is that those two cancel each other out. But of course, if I do 4 to the power of one side, I have to do 4 to the power of the other side. So 64 is equal to 4 to the power of 3. And you can check me that is true. All right, next, I want to get rid of a log base 3. So that means I'm going to take 3 to the power of that side and do it to the other side, 3 to the power of that side. So the definition of log means that a log base 3 and another base of 3 exponential cancel each other out. I'm left with 243 is equal to 3 to the power of 5. Now, there's a bit of a pattern emerging here that I want you to see so we can sort of skip a few steps. So let me erase some of my work here so you can see some of this pattern. So how can I go straight from this statement to my answer? Well, 4 raised to the power of 3, which is right here, is equal to 64. You can see that's the same statement here. And over here, 3 to the power of the other side, to the power of 5, is equal to 243. And so if I do that pattern on this one, 5 to the power of 4 is equal to 625. So that's kind of a, a shortcut or a good way to think of a log. Um, every log statement is an exponential in hiding. And so the exponential is the base raised to the power of the other side equal to 625. All right. Let's clear that off and keep going and studying this. With that pattern, 
we want to sort of turn that into a formula now. Now that we sort of see a pattern for logs, let's turn that into a pattern. So I'm going to take away the numbers here, and we're just going to do a basic log statement with all letters. So log, the base could be any number, so I'm going to use a, a variable, b for base, log base b of a, so there's a number here always, is equal to another number, c. So if you have any log statement at all like that, what does that mean? Well, that means b to the power of c is equal to a. So b to the power of c is equal to a. And that's sort of the real definition of a log statement. If you have a log statement like this, that just means that this number to the power of the answer must be equal to your number here, the a value. That's If you look in a textbook, that's what the definition will be. So there's our log formula. Oops, because I didn't erase everything. There we go. All right, one more. How can we evaluate some log statements now? For most of these, we've already sort of known the answer, what's on this other side of the equal sign. What if we don't know what's on the other side of the equal sign? So here we've got two log statements that aren't finished. We don't know what the answer is, so we want to try to find it. This is a little hard because log is a operation that we are not familiar with. So we got to practice this, and to do that, we're going to turn this into something we are familiar with an exponential. So if this is my log, what is the exponential? Well, it's 10 to the power of a number I don't know. So 10 to the power of a number I don't know is equal to 1,000. And this problem we can sort of do in our heads a little bit. 10 to what power is 1,000? Well, 10 to the power of 3. So that tells me that this log statement has to be equal to 3 because 10 cubed is equal to 1,000. All right, and so now this one, we ask ourselves 6 to the what power is equal to 1,296? So 6 to the what power is equal to 1,296. Well, that one we may not be able to do in our head as quickly, certainly. So we just have to sort of guess and check. 6 to the power of 2 is 36. 6 to the power of 3 is bigger. 6 to the power of 4 is bigger. Let's try that out real quick. Let me pull up my calculator here. There we are. So 6 to the power of, let's try 3. Now it's not big enough. 216 isn't big enough. So 6 to the power of 4. Is that big enough? There we go, 1,296. So 6 to the power of 4 is what I want. So x is equal to 4, which means log base 6 of 1,296 is equal to 4. So for now, guess and check is really the only way we can sometimes find these logs if we don't have the exponential memorized. It is one reason why logs are kind of weird, but that opposite relationship is still what we're looking for. All right, so that is a quick introduction into the log statement, which is the opposite or the inverse of an exponential. And so every time you see an exponential, there's a log problem there. And every time you see a log problem, there's an exponential problem there as well. We want to see sort of the opposite relationship between those. All right, so here are a few practice problems for you to try out. Good luck, and hopefully those make sense.